everybody, Bob Martin with rcsub.com and the Nautilus Dry Docks, and uh, this is part two uh, of this uh, video blog. I'm going to focus on the torpedo system here uh, right now. I'm going to tinker around with that before I have to go on a business trip here for the next week or so, but this is what I got to work with. This is what was um, sent to me with the kit, and this was uh, kind of a neat piece of fabrication uh, on behalf of the previous owner. Um, the idea being that this uh, rod across the top would actuate the uh, torpedo doors. Now I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna. I think I'm going to keep those doors fixed in an open position for the sake of uh, simplicity. The idea behind this, you got the actuator here. It pushes the um, torpedo tube door open first, and then you can see in the back it engages this catch, which uh, when pressed up releases the uh, torpedo. Um, I'm going to go with something a little bit simpler and it's based off the Dave Merriman uh, 72nd scale torpedo launcher that I installed in the Seawolf project a little while ago. I really like the simplicity of it. I'll show you what I've done here uh, so far. This is the uh, uh, a 32nd parallel torpedo piece uh, that I had that I'm going to utilize. Uh, this is the rear cap, uh, the nose cone, and uh, an aluminum body. Now, in my experience, the challenge with these is that uh, if you try and use the main uh, piece as a pressure vessel, because you've got disparate materials, you've got resin uh, and aluminum, the, the freezing cold temperature of the propel gas actually causes a different rate of expansion and contraction, and it'll crack your seal um, almost immediately. So. My idea uh, with this was to create my own internal pressure vessel and I used uh, some brass tubing for that, some brass flat stock. Uh, I cut out some end caps, soldered them uh, on the ends to create the pressure vessel and then soldered in this uh, very, very thin aperture 16th inch diameter brass rod as the nozzle. And you can see this is where I'm at right now. I've got it um, installed inside the body of the torpedo. I've got it adhered in there with a little bit of uh, rubber reinforced CA glue. So this is where I'm, uh, I'm at right now. you got a, a self-contained pressure vessel with only one inlet and outlet uh, at the back. So this is going to be not only the discharge uh, nozzle but also the filling nozzle as well. Uh, I don't know if you can see right here but these are very very tiny 16th inch uh, o-rings and uh, I'm going to make a uh, compression fitting in the back there that you'll be able to tighten or loosen to make sure that you get a nice tight fit and uh, basically in order to launch the torpedo you simply pull that breech off the back torpedo goes flying forwards. So that's where I am at right now. I'm going to continue fabricating this and then uh, move on to the launcher assembly and we'll see what we got to work with. All right, let's take a bit of a closer look at the torpedo construction. So I got the uh, torpedo body, the cast nose cone and tail cone. Now these are taken from a 30 second parallel kit so I had these but you could easily turn this out of um, standard aluminum stock uh, and manufacture your own out of plastic or resin. Uh, this is a uh, standard brass tubing, standard brass flat sheet. Uh, this is the completed pressure vessel and uh, you can see here I've got the end caps soldered on with silver solder. And I've got the nozzle uh, soldered on in a similar fashion. I left this nice and long so I can just trim it to size afterwards. You can see on this completed torpedo um, I've left it long and I'm going to trim it right at that point likely. So this is how everything is uh, set up prior to assembly. The um, pressure vessel gets inserted into the body of the torpedo. The end caps go on and then everything is uh, glued down with rubber reinforced cyanoacrylate. Alright, let's take a look at the launcher mechanism. Now one of the more complicated parts of that uh, is the 
seal that seals against this shaft here and allows us to fill the torpedo with the uh, propel gas. So what I've come up with for this uh, solution uh, is something that looks like this. I've got two brass <coughs> uh, nuts soldered to a, a plate. Um, these little seals that I had showed you before go inside and then I've got a uh, brass um, bolt that's been drilled through that will go in like this. And now what that does, and the, and the important part about this, that, what that does is when you tighten this bolt down, it compresses the O-ring against that front plate. And if you don't do that, um, what I find is you get a leak, uh, if not immediately, then eventually. So by making it so that we can compress this seal against the face uh, and the bolt, uh, we won't get any leaks, but we've still got a clear channel between the uh, front plate, or in this case actually the, the torpedo itself, uh, and then going out, which is going to be going through some uh, rubber tubing, and then into this uh, Schrader valve, this tire valve, that'll allow us to fill it up. So we'll see if this works. Uh, this is a little bit different than I have done it before, but I'm pretty confident that it will work. All right, this is uh, going to be the last uh, little snippet in this uh, section of video, and we'll move on to the next one. So this is the uh, torpedo launcher assembly that uh, came with the kit, and again, the uh, the gentleman that had this before did a did a really awesome job. I'm still going to be modifying this launcher um, mechanism because it's uh, a little bit unsuited for what I'm going to be trying to attempt. But I'm, I did modify the back. I removed these breeches that he had in place, and I modified. Uh, the back. So here's the torpedo uh, that I finished and I've trimmed the nozzle to size. Um, so the way that this is going to work, you're going to load the, uh, the torpedo uh, and I'm just going to use another torpedo here just to hold it in place. I'll have a, a, uh, a press that will go with it for, for loading. We'll take a look at the other end here. This is the um, quasi-completed uh, breach that I have built. So you can see I've turned uh, the end of it to make it uh, round, cylindrical. I've got a, a nut on here that will be adjustable and this will allow me to set the uh, distance without having to modify the linkage. So the way that this will work is you load your torpedo inside. You can see the, the nozzle right there. This will go on the um, end of the torpedo that's in place so now that the torpedo is in place you'll load it with propel through this tube pressurizing this entire system so there'll be liquid propel inside the torpedo inside the breech all through the hose so to launch uh, this will obviously be out of place. There's going to be a catch at the front. The linkage will withdraw, the lock will release, and the breech will pull back. That will release all of the gas out of the back of the nozzle and the torpedo will come flying out of the front. Hopefully not at too fast or too slow of a velocity, but we'll get to that later when we play with the diameter of the nozzle. So those are the beginnings of the torpedo system. Uh, in the next video we will probably go a little bit further into the launcher assembly, maybe get some testing in place and I think I'm going to start chopping this big hull up. I'm going to make it uh, into three pieces. I'm going to chop that big old expensive hull up and we'll see what we can do to make it a little bit more transport friendly. So thanks for joining me. We'll catch you guys next time.